You may be seated. At this time, we observe the Lord's Supper as the Lord commanded his followers to do. It's an, or it's an ordinance designed to keep in our minds the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, which paid the price for our redemption from sin. To prepare our hearts, we'll be looking at a passage from the Bible, and we would ask that you follow along as we consider this passage. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand, and one of the men who are at the front here will hand you one. And if you don't own one, you are free to keep this for your own use. Please turn with me to the letter of Hebrews chapter 10, and I'll be reading from verses 15 through 22a. This letter was written to first century Christians who were Jewish, and uh, they were retarded in their spiritual growth. Uh, they, at, the, by the, at this time, when he writes this, they should have been teachers, but they still had need of people to teach them the elementary things of Christ. What I want us to see is how the author uses the death of Christ to encourage and impel these Jewish early believers to progress in the Christian life. Specifically, he's showing them how the death of Christ was superior to the animal sacrifices that they knew as Jewish believers when they were Jews without Christ. Follow along as I read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 through 22a. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws upon their heart and their mind, I, on their mind I will write them. He then says, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins or offering for sins. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the, high, over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. In this passage, the author refers to the new covenant promised by God in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah predicted that in the future, God would write his laws on the hearts of his people. God would also no longer remember their sins. Christ's death would remove their sins, and there would be no need for any further sacrifice for sins. The author quotes from Psalm 40 in verses uh, 5 through 7 of this chapter, which pictures Jesus speaking to his father at the time when he would come into the world as a human being. He says, sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God, God's will was that his son would become the sacrifice for sin, which would actually remove man's sins forever. The son's sacrifice would please the father because it would actually satisfy the righteous wrath of God against our sins. The Old Testament sacrifices were merely shadows or symbols of the realities of the new covenant. The law was a tutor to bring us to Christ, God pre prepared a body for his son so that he would come into the world to be the only sacrifice which could satisfy his holy wrath against our sin. What many animal sacrifices could not do, Jesus did by one sacrifice. Listen to the statements in this chapter that, which emphasize the one sacrifice of Christ. In verse 10, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now this is talking about positional sanctification. 
uh, not the practical sanctification at this point. And that just means that we've been made saints. We've been set apart to be God's people. In verse 12, he says, He, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God. And in verse 14, By one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. We have a perfect standing before God because Christ's perfection is imputed to us. He chose us before he created, us, before he created the world. And he gave us perfect standing forever through the death of his son. When Jesus died, he made complete atonement for all the sins of Old Testament believers and for all the sins of New Testament believers. Not only does the death of Jesus bring us forgiveness of sins, it also gives us access into the very presence of God. Under the Old Covenant, the presence of God is said to be the holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was housed, uh, that area was hidden behind a veil. And only the priest, only the high priest, could enter through that veil once a year with the blood of animals. When Jesus died, the veil of that temple was split in two from top to bottom, signifying that Jesus had opened the way into the very presence of God for sinners to have access to a holy God. Jesus entered the true presence of God in heaven through his own blood. So the writer of Hebrews says that we have confidence to enter that holy place by the blood of Jesus. He calls this a new and living way. Using Old, old Covenant terminal, terminology, he says that Jesus inaugurated this new and living way to God through the veil that is his flesh. Because we have a new and living way in Christ, the writer invites us to draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. God is faithful, and in him we find uh, grace to persevere in the Christian life. Christian, as you partake of the cup, remember that Jesus' blood and his body are the only basis upon which God can fully forgive our sins. Be ready to confess and forsake any sin, for Jesus died for that sin. Remember also that Jesus' blood and body are the means by which God, we can approach God. We could never do this on our own. We should, we should draw near to him often. If you're here today and you are not fully trusting Christ alone for your salvation, we ask that you not partake of the communion. This ordinance is for followers of Christ, for people that are trusting him alone for their salvation. But we ask that you give careful attention to what happened on the cross when Jesus died. This is the only sacrifice for sin that God has provided for man, the only way that any man can ever approach God. To not trust in Christ is to be eternally separated from God because you're yet in your sins. But to trust him is to have joy forevermore in his presence because your sins are forgiven. Men, come in service, and uh, when your heart is prepared, you, might, you may partake of the cup and the bread. <laughs>